Hello and what a great day to sew something wonderful. I'm Kia with Kia B and I'm so excited to be back with you for our very first Christmas in July quilting video. So today is a little bit of a tutorial, more tips and tricks on how I sew borders onto my quilts. I told y'all last Monday in our floss tube that we were going to be sharing with you how to put borders onto your quilts or really how rather how I put borders on my quilts to give you some tips and tricks tricks for that. My plan was to film that before we left for our little family vacation. If you follow us on Instagram, you know that we have been gone for the last several days. Uh, my camera died as soon as I went to finish that. So I've got that for you today, but I did tell you last week that I would get that done for you. So I wanted to make sure and have it done in plenty of time. So I today am using a quilt project that I wanted to start using our half yard bundle. I told y'all that if you wanted to get ahead on this tutorial, you should go ahead and make the half yard wreath, which is a free pattern from Fat Quarter Shop that you can download. They have a great tutorial that you can head over to their YouTube channel and watch on how to make that. And so um, this is just a tutorial on how to add borders to quilts and I happen to be using that one. So why don't we head on over to the studio table and my sewing machine and I'll give you a little bit of tips and tricks for that. Materials that you'll need for today's project are very simple and I feel like I say that every time but uh, with this one we really don't need much. So I just have a case of pins. These are just flower head pins. Um, you'll need several of these and then you'll need your quilting project, which I am using the Half Yard Christmas Wreath from, um, it is a free pattern from Fat Quarter Shop. I put this together and all, I'm, um, all I have to do is add the borders and then quilt it and bind it. And so then you will obviously, so you'll need your quilt project and then you will obviously need your called for uh, border strips. So this particular pattern called for two and a half inch strips. I have those all cut up here, cut to the length the pattern gave me, and I am ready to add on the borders. So very simple. Then you'll obviously need a sewing machine and a coordinating thread, and you'll be ready to go. So my very first tip for you is if you have a directional fabric, so if you are using uh, Sweet Christmas like we are this month for Christmas in July, you will have some directional prints. Make sure that your directional prints when you're sewing your wreath together are going in the right direction. So this down here would be my, the bottom of my quilt and this up here would be the top of my quilt because my candy canes are going this direction. With that being said, we're gonna add on our side borders first. Now, I'm not showing you how to make this pattern at all because Fat Quarter Shop already has a great video on how to do this. So you can head over to their uh, YouTube channel and see that. This is just basically me giving you tips on how I add the borders. So, first thing first, what I do, since we're going to add the sides, and I can tell this is the side because my candy canes right here, that directional print, are facing this way, so I know this is the side. So whatever project you're working on, grab this side, and we're gonna grab one of our shorter border strips. And what I've done is starch, starch, starch. It is pretty important so that you are not stretching the bias on your borders as you're sewing them to your quilt project so you don't kind of stretch everything out. I love to starch this, steam it, starch it again, and so it's really got a lot of um, firmness to it and that way uh, we we can work with it really easily. So I've got my first strip and I've pressed this in half, and I will tell you why in just a second. I know um, some people just prefer to finger press it. That's totally fine too. Whatever you need to do to be able to see that center line. And don't worry if you press it in half, you're going to be able to um, press that out when you press open your borders. So you're gonna take your quilting project and fold that in half. And for this part, I am just going to finger press and my center happens to be on a seam right here, so that's perfect for me. And what I'm going to do, and I do this for all of my projects, so it's just very like second nature to me now. I'm gonna take that seam or your finger pressed center mark of your quilt side 
and I'm going to line up that pressed center and I'm gonna stick a pin in there. I always start from the center and I guesstimate, really, I use the pattern for what length I should cut my borders. I, I do use the pattern. So in this case, they gave me a certain measurement. I use that to cut my borders. Sorry, there's a large, loud car driving down the street. Um, I use that to cut my borders, but I always cut just a little bit bigger than what it says. And I, that way I have plenty of room to square up just in case my quarter inch seam was off a little bit. So now what I do is about every, I don't know, maybe six inches or so, maybe four to six inches, I put a pin in. I don't think you can pin too much in uh, your border just because you wanna make sure that quilt doesn't shift at all. You wanna make sure that your seams are all going the same direction that you originally pressed them and that you've kind of squared up your quilt top before you add on your borders. There we go. And you shouldn't need to pull on your fabric at all. Your border should just lay nice and flat. And so I'll keep going here. And then here at the end, you'll see, now I don't have any overhang at all. Now this could be one of two reasons. One, my quarter inch seam coming down these lines were a little bit off. Or two, that's why, that's why I um, cut the border just a little bit bigger. Or two, something is off in the quilt top itself right around this corner. So that's okay, I'm not gonna sweat about it. I'm just going to go to the end here and I'm going to pin. I mean, it's like an eighth of an inch off. I'm not too, too concerned about it as long as everything will uh, even out within the squaring. I'm not too concerned. And an eighth of an inch, that's gonna get caught in the seam allowance of our top border anyway. So I've got the first half pinned. I'm gonna go down to the second half and pin this as well. Now, for some of my more advanced uh, subscribers, I know this, this video might be kind of intermediate for you, but I wanted to explain what I do personally just because um, I have found that we have a lot of beginner quilters that are watching our channel and I want to make sure that you guys have a place to come and find kind of uh, my tips and tricks on on what I find is easiest to do in, in my quilting and I've gotten so many of my tips and tricks from YouTube before I started and even now um, if I'm finding a concept kind of difficult then I hop on YouTube and go find a tutorial that will work really well for me okay so now that this is all pinned I would head over to my sewing machine and sew a quarter of an inch all the way down that side. Now this works really well because you're going to grab both layers. Now here's my other tip. I go ahead and put on my walking foot right now before I do these borders. And I've given that tip before as I'm sewing on the bias. I use a walking foot so that all the layers of fabric are going through together. When I'm putting on my borders, I do the same thing. I'm kind of a walking foot fanatic. I use it for so many different things. So on my machine, I've already got my walking foot. I'm gonna zip it down these borders and that way it kind of eats the quilt and the border all at the same time. So now I have that very first side border put on. I love the contrast of this red and white. This, oh, I'm gonna love this hanging in this studio for Christmas in July. Okay, so I've got this first border on. Now the pattern tells me to flip and do the other border next, the, the next side border. Some patterns will tell you to do maybe the left, then the top, then the right, then the bottom, or some configuration of that. This particular pattern tells me to do the uh, both sides and then the top and bottom. Now here's how I know that it's uh, top versus bottom versus side. So my top and bottom are going to be about four, I think four inches bigger than my sides and that kind of allots for the two and a half inch width that is the border strips. So I'm gonna continue and add on my other side border and I'm just gonna let you watch how I pin that on as well.
some tips I want to give you for sewing down this side. One, use a very small stitch length. That way, as you're pressing open and kind of pulling and tugging, you're not going to pull any stitches out accidentally. We've got our walking foot on again. And then the other thing is make sure you back stitch at the top and bottom. Usually in quilting we don't have to do that, but I like to do it on the borders because that I feel like is the most kind of pulled part. So I want to make sure they don't come apart. So quarter inch uh, seam allowance all the way down. Make sure you back stitch at the top and bottom. Okay, now this other side is sewn on. And my next step is to go over and you guessed it, starch this again. I wanna press it going toward the outside and I wanna starch this really well one more time. Steam it and starch it. Now, sometimes when I'm sewing, you will see me kind of pick up the fabric or kind of do this with it. That is me flipping the seams to make sure that I'm still staying with these seams going the direction that I've pressed them originally. So now I'll head over and I will press and starch this again. And then your last step, which I won't make you watch me do, but your last step would be to add your top and bottom on borders on just the way I've showed you there. That process was pretty painful. I kind of feel like, especially for beginners, and I kind of alluded to this when we were stitching, that um, for beginners, it can be a little frustrating because you can have this great quilt top that you have finished and you think your quarter inch seams are perfect. Or you know they're maybe not perfect, but they'll get swallowed up in another seam. And you get to the borders and you're like, man, why did my quilt turn out so crooked? Or why does the border look like it's tapering from two and a half to two inches and things like that. And so this tutorial just is how I do it to help me kind of stay on track. I gave you a tip of how to cut your borders just a little bit bigger than what the pattern calls for. And that way you have a little bit of allotment for your borders. So y'all, are you ready for this quilt? If you have not made this quilt with your half yard bundle yet, it takes six half yard cuts and it's so cute. So after this week, tomorrow actually, I'm gonna work on quilting this, put the binding on, and it's gonna replace this quilt over here for our very first quilt project with Sweet Christmas. So let me make sure my direction is right. You guys, look how good this looks. So this is just super, super cute. I have to stand on my tippy toes. I absolutely love it. Sorry, the kids are still awake tonight. Oh, we're still getting back out of vacation mode. Uh, but I love this quilt. The only thing I have not done besides the quilting and the binding is the bow. Now the pattern gives you a great bow. And like I said, they have a tutorial that you are welcome to go watch. It's wonderful. But I was, in my head, I was kind of thinking about something different. So I'm gonna continue to look for a bow. You actually don't even, you, you do everything to finish the quilt before you put the bow on anyway. And so I've got something working in my brain that I might wanna use as a bow. So we'll see what happens. So let me know how this went for you. Do you have your wreath quilt done? Is it beautiful? I loved how I switched the background color because I use all the uh, the basic white prints through the bundle and I love how I used this red. Now if you want to know this is not a Kona solid or a Bella solid or anything like that this is actually a print from Bonnie and Camille from their Christmas line and um, you can see it's not a solid it goes um, it doesn't have a double side. So solids typically have a double side where you could flip them. This one does not. So the yardage was a little bit more expensive, uh, the same as a print, but I couldn't find the perfect red that I wanted to use. And so I found this from Bonnie and Camille and loved it. So that's what I used. So I can't wait to see all of your quilts. If you made one, I want you to go over to Instagram, use the hashtag in the hive for the holidays, and I wanna see what you are working on for your quilting. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us in the hive today. I hope you felt like this was a informative kind of tips and tricks video for you. And until next time, thank you so much for joining us.